when I say that the piece is a response, I really mean that, um, that it is a response to the Feldman piece and the um, Rothko paintings. And the composition has such a profound effect on me when I was in my early 20s listening to it um, after having been exposed to Morton Feldman's music for some years before. And I happened upon that piece and the music really spoke to me um, just in a profound way. I mean, there's no really direct way that words can really communicate the way that I felt after listening to the piece. But I wanted to construct a piece that was, you know, not only in dialogue with the composition itself, but also in dialogue with the feelingful engagement that I've had with that work and tying it together with other very important works um, that I felt were very influential to me, such as Duke Ellington's Sacred Music um, that, was, that he did, and also um, Spirituals, and a number of other things, and especially some of the things that have been happening during this century um, that have also been influential to me in putting together something that I felt was you know, as personal as the time that we're in, but also something that is in direct dialogue with all of these uh, different influences, including Mark Rothko himself, whose you know, 14 paintings I think are very much synonymous with what I feel my music is. My way of responding to the Feldman Rothko Chapel piece was by using the exact same instrumentation as the Feldman piece with the addition of a bass baritone um, replacing a soprano vocalist. Like, so I had a bass baritone, Devon Tynes, who was the only person who I had in mind to uh, perform this piece, by the way. And the addition of piano um, into the instrumentation. I added the piano into it, number one, because it's one of my favorite instruments to write for, but two, <laughs> it's because um, of the decay of sound that a piano makes that really attracts me a lot, in much the same way that the sound of the piano attracts Feldman. I wanted to treat that sound world in a way that was also, you know, my own way of dealing with, say, improvisation, right? Where the drums for a second can be a central focus of something, or the piano can be the central focus, or a saxophone or a trumpet can be the central focus. Well, here the viola is the central focus for the entire time of the piece. You know, it's not like tossing around back and forth. And so even during times when the viola isn't playing, you still get the sense that, you know, she's there. Like she's there kind of watching guard over everything, <laughs> everything else that's kind of taking place. So, um, so Kim Kaskashian, of course, was, um, you know, she just approaches this music really brilliantly. And Sarah Rothenberg, what a touch she has on the piano and the celesta. And of course, the inimitable Steve Schick, uh, who I've mentioned earlier on percussion. You can look at the notes on the page, make sure everything's okay, and then unlearn it. Then make it your own, you know, have it become something else other than what I wrote there. And this, of course, is also very much in line from what my ethos of music is is that, you know, this is really life that's expressed in sound or life experiences um, sonically expressed. 